Pliny! I am excited because today we're building a couple of boards for Pliny. Now, if you haven't heard of Pliny, he's a legendary guitarist from Australia whose approach to guitar playing and tone is just incredibly unique and creative. You definitely want to check him out. So Pliny's guitar tech, Ricky, reached out because he needed a couple of compact boards that he could put a quad cortex and an expression pedal on for both Pliny and his guitarist, Jake. We were more than happy to make it happen and we figured this would be a good opportunity to bring you along for my approach to building a board from start to finish. So grab a coffee and let's get into it. The goal at the end of the day is to have the quad cortex and an expression pedal on top. But underneath we'll be mounting a power supply, we'll have all sorts of mods on the side, lots of fun happening under the hood. Here's the plan. So we'll have a power con in on the side, which is those blue locking connectors, which avoids someone accidentally joinking your cable out. On the left side, we've got a MIDI input and then an XLR out with our XLR mod, male and male. On the right, we whipped up a special mod just for Pliny. That's actually a modification of our studio mod, a mod mod, if you will that allows them to do a balanced XLR input, which is coming from his wireless backstage. It then converts it to an unbalanced output, which runs to the quad cortex. This level control on top allows them to dial in just the right level so it can match the quarter inch input, which is actually an override. So if the wireless goes down, dead battery, etc., and they need to plug in last minute, it will actually override when it detects a physical cable plugged in. And then that also goes through to the quad cortex. So it's a great solution for something that Ricky Pliny's guitar tech was wondering what the best solution was. And Dale, our R and D guy, like really came through with this. So we were really excited with how it came out. It's got Pliny's signature on there, super fancy. And no, you can't have one because we only made two of them. So let's clear off this table and I'm going to start installing the mods. We'll get the power supply on probably one of the first things after that. Okay, so I'm going to open up my PowerCon mod here. So when you get an XLR mod, uh, they actually come with a couple of these cables, which is XLR to a quarter inch TRS. And what that allows you to do is run the XLR out through one of these cable management holes. And then imagine this will be mounted on the side of the board. And then you can plug that into the back of the mod, which actually then carries it back through to an XLR on the other side. So you start and end with XLR, but what this allows you to do is to get that end through the cable management holes whereas this bulkier XLR cable won't actually fit. But in our case, we're not actually gonna be using those cables because once you've got the quad cortex on top, you'll notice that that actually sticks out quite a lot on the back. Um, if you were using something like our Duo 17, which is 12 and a half inches deep, you'd have a little more space back here. And in a lot of cases that's great, but one of the goals Ricky wanted to achieve was getting it on as compact as a, of a rig as possible. So we put together these cables that actually have a right angle XLR end on them, made by Cable Techniques. Um, they're actually really cool because once they're in there, we can move the XLR cable to the side and they you can see, hopefully, oh, let's plug it into the XLR slot, not the MIDI, that they're nice and flush with the front of the board. So those are an exciting find. Check them out, cable techniques. Set those aside for now. So the first thing I like to do when building a board is get the mods in place. Um, and that involves, for me at least, pulling the end caps off. I just find it simpler that way. You pull the end caps off, pull the colored blanks out of place, and uh, 
and start installing the different uh, connectivity that you need on the side. So let's do that. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is pull these feet off. You can use a normal number two screwdriver, number two Phillips, I should say. I like using a drill, just be careful when you're putting screws back in not to over tighten. So same thing with the handle screws here. You gotta go on a bit of an angle to get them, but it is possible. Pull those out, get those handles out of there. Now sometimes the end caps can be in there a little hard, but if you give them a bit of a, of a bump with your hand or like if you have a rubber mallet, if you have one laying around, they'll come off. Then, if you got something like our IEC mod or the PowerCon mod, it's gonna come with a mod driver, a couple of screws for installing it. I would use that screwdriver if you got one, but if you don't in your case, um, you can use any number one Phillips screwdriver. So in this case, I'm gonna be filling all the mod slots, so let's pull out all the screws. So sometimes these plates will come out easy. Other times there might be a little bit of powder coating on there. In this case, the smaller one is, is going to take a little more oomph, but it will come out. So if you're concerned that it's stuck in there, like try just a little bit harder. If it's really not coming out for you, reach out to us and we'll, we'll figure something out. All right. So first I want to install this PowerCon mod. Take the couple of screws that it came with, put that mod in place. I always recommend having the logo facing down. It's kind of how we designed it. It will go in the other way, but I don't know. I find it's nicer that way. Line up those screws. I usually like to just get one screw mostly in there and then start working on the other one. And then once you've got that one, mostly installed back and then go back to the other and kind of cinch up both. Now I can tighten that one most of the way, go back to the other one. And you want to be sure you don't uh, over tighten. You can go pretty darn tight, but you don't want to be like taking a drill to this thing and stripping out the threads. Give that a test to make sure it's not wobbling and you're good to go. Now, when it comes to installing, this isn't going on this side, I'm gonna grab the plenty mod. Now, when it comes to, to installing these mods, that's where it's gonna go, but you don't wanna install that yet because you're not going to be able to install your handle screws. So we'll hold off in installing that one. I'm actually gonna to go to the other side and install our middies. All right, so let's pull this side off. Those handle screws out of there. Set all that hardware aside. Give it a bump. Set that over here. Pull those blanks out again. And let's bump those out. That one was a little trickier. We got it though. And let's grab a micro punch plate, which is what we're gonna need to install our MIDI connector. I'll show you that. So we have a punch plate and a MIDI connector. Now these punch plates are a, an adapter that essentially allows you to convert this mod slot into a D style connector. And there's a ton of options out there for D series connections that, you know, Nutrick makes a lot of options for XLR, locking TRS, RJ45 ethernet kind of stuff. Anything you might need, you know, there's lots of options. This allows you to mount in the side of the board. So what you want to do is pull the screws out of that blank. Now 
and we'll set the blank aside. But you want to hang on to those screws because these screws are what you're going to actually use to mount the MIDI connector in. So I just want to make sure I've got this uh, facing the right way here. Sometimes I um, confuse myself. <laughs> All right. That is not correct. I think I'll start by just mounting it in there. But you want to make sure that these screws, screw holes align. If you were to mount that the other way, would it still work? I don't think so. Yeah, so now, now those angled screws don't line up. So you want to make sure that you get it this way, which is the correct way. So I'm going to start by just putting that punch plate in place. It'll make life easier for installing the, the MIDI connector. Screw that in, get this mod screw in. <clears throat> All right, so let's screw that into place. Need more uh, magnetism on this mod driver. You can rub it against a magnet. Actually, let's do that. Pro tip, rub your screwdriver on a magnet and it'll be magnetic. Yay, that makes life a lot easier for lots of things. Fasten that in place. I am having issues with this one, but we'll get there, guys. Okay. Rip and dip, dip and do. I always say. Okay. Whew, we made it. Good. Good. Okay, same as on the other side. Don't install the mod yet, because then your handles, you won't be able to put your handle screws in. So let's put these end caps back on the board, like so. I like to give it a little thwack, like that. You can hear a nice click into place, because there's actually a groove on the inside of the board that your uh, end cap, you know, that the perf will fit nicely into the end cap, which gives it some nice rigidity on top. So let's install those handle screws back in. I like to put the handles in place, or the screws in place. And then I suggest, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I'll come to the other side. I usually suggest kind of putting the screws in on a bit of an angle like this. So get one started like so, and then get the other one started. And kind of go back and forth. Um, just cause if you fasten one screw in all the way, it's gonna make it harder to get the other screw in straight. So let's, uh, Get one side mostly in, and then the other side. Cinch those both back up. Actually, in general, I'd probably usually put the feet screws in first, but it, it doesn't really matter which one you do first. Just make sure you got your screw holes properly aligned so as to not cross thread anything. If you are using a drill, again, can't say it enough, don't over tighten. I've got a pretty good feel for how tight to go. If you've got a impact drill like this, you can, you've got a lot of torque and it's easy to break the heads off of stuff. So just take it slow. If you're not comfortable with the drill, use a, use a uh, good old fashioned number two screwdriver. All right, let's put the other side in. Got the PowerCon mod. Oops, that's backwards. Don't, don't do this, because that doesn't work. Let's do this. Yeah. The square peg goes in the square hole. All right. So, feet screws. Zip, zip. Other foot screw. And then back to 
the handles on this side handle screw handle screw handles on a bit of an angle or the screws on a bit of an angle so you don't strip anything out all right all right all right all right good all right so end caps back on now you just need to put the mods in place let's let's, let's see here we want the XLR out on that side and the Pliny mod on that side. So let's set this over here for now. So let's put the XLR mod in place. When you're installing mods, you always put the text side down so you can see the XLR mod there. That's the side that's going to be showing once you have the mod in place. So I'm going to put that mod right there and then Fasten that in with a couple of mod screws and our now magnetized mod driver. I'm trying to do this so you can see, but sometimes it's awkward. You can mostly see that, right? All right. Other side. Same as the first. Zip that in. Now you can go pretty darn hard as far as torquing goes, but you don't want to be turning that as hard as you possibly can, but close to that. Um, let's get the other side in. This fancy new and improved Pliny Mod. That will go right there. Usually get one side started and then do the other side the rest of the way. See, I did the left side a little too tight. So the right peg isn't quite aligning on me. So I'm gonna loosen the left side off a bit. I can properly align the right. Now she's going in. Now that that's tightened up, let's go back to the left and do it the rest of the way. So I think as far as mods go, we got XLR mod on the left, MIDI in, PowerCon in, and our Pliny mod input on that side. So I think we're good to move on to power. Now I'm going to have the quad cortex on top. With this one I actually already have our quick release pedal plates installed. This was actually from my board which is a temple demo board. Um, but I'll show you how to install the plates on the other one. I want to make sure that when we install this We don't have any conflicts with the power supply under the board. So you can see that we've actually got four thumb screw holes here that are gonna, what we're gonna use to fasten the quad cortex in place. And there's actually three um, mounting threads on the bottom of the DC7 that we're gonna use to mount that to the bottom of this board. There's other ways you can mount power supplies. You can mount with our quick release system. You can mount on some boards have a mounting bracket that's pre-installed on the board. You can put things on that bracket itself. Um, in this case, we're gonna be putting the DC7 and the crux under here, something like that to be decided. We're gonna work through all this together. I think something like this will probably work. So I'm gonna plug the IC cable into the DC7. And I can see now that I might want to do something more like that. I will say the DC7 is a little overkill in this scenario um, because really the only thing 
that they're powering is gonna be through the crux to the quad cortex. The Dunlop expression pedal is a passive TRS controller, so there's no power running to it. The one thing that we will be powering, which I should actually install next, is the RGB LED strip that we make. So let's actually maybe, let's do that next. We'll come back to the power supply in a minute. All right, so here's one of our RGB LED strips. Open that bad boy up. And what you get in the package is the LED strip itself, manual, and then a little RGB controller. This knife is dull, let's get a new segment. All right, so in that package, we've got an RF controller, an alcohol swab, and a zip tie. Let's see how we put those to use. I always recommend installing LEDs on the guitarist side. So when I'm looking down at the board, this is the guitarist side here. Back has the logo on it. Um, I recommend on the topmost portion of the guitarist side. Um, so we wanna go up against the, uh, the holy perf pattern up here. So I think, Trying to think which side we're going to want this uh, this DC barrel plug to be on. So let's plug that back in. Can't remember if we want to do this. Quad cortex will be on the left. Let's see, yeah, let's. I'll plan to put the DC barrel plug on this side. Step one: pull the uh, paper backing off of the. LED strip, like so. Just give this side a little tear. And then, oh, I forgot an important step. Don't do what I did. Step one, give it a rub with uh, some rubbing alcohol. Give that just a quick, quick wipe. That just removes any residue or oils from the surface, so. You set yourself up for success for the adhesive to properly adhesivize. We'll let that dry. So I've given that a bit of time to dry. And now I'm going to start on one side. Apply the adhesive on that LED strip. Kind of press from one side to the other. And everyone knows that the LEDs are one of the most important parts of the build. They're uh, mostly to look cool, but also a little bit of a practical element because it helps you, you know, at least be able to locate your pedals on a dark stage. Got that cool underglow backlight. So I've kind of pressed that multiple times kind of everywhere. And then I recommend um, taking this receiver portion and zip tying it in place. Um, what I do with these zip ties is usually bend to the one side because um, it makes it easier to... This actually might get in the way in the case of this build. Uh, maybe not. Sometimes if you've got a zip tie on top, you might need to move it. But I think in this case, we're going to be golden because uh, I'm going to put the quad cortex a little a uh, little bit of ways from the one end. All right, so I recommend putting that through one hole, back up through another. You can see that there. Um, and then zip tying it on. Get that kind of flat against the surface. And then cinch it up. You don't want to go too tight because then you're going to start to kind of crimp the cable together. And then we're going to snip off the slack, snip off the slack. Now that we have the LEDs installed, let's talk power supply again. So I'm going to probably plan to go somewhere around there and I'm going to grab some thumb screws because I 
don't have some right now. All right, we got some thumb screws. I'm just gonna screw this into place so I don't have to fight with gravity anymore. Just put a couple in there. And let's grab the screws for this bad boy. All right, so the DC-7 comes with an Allen key and some of these Allen key screws that actually are great for mounting the DC-7 in place. So I think we want to go roughly there. So I'm just gonna do that, hold it around there to make sure it's not conflicting anywhere. And then flip that around. And you can see, just give that a bit of a nudge to where the holes line up. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but that looks good there. Let's get those kind of started. My fingers. Another one. Another one. And another one. Okay. Tighten that in. Maybe. Okay. So I'm just going to get those like not quite tight tight. But pretty good. So that I can straighten it out because I like things nice and square. Just using a row of holes kind of as a guide. That looks pretty darn good to me. Tighten it in. And there's rubber feet that come standard on the bottom of this thing. I like leaving them on because then you got a little bit of like room for compression of that and then it protects the board surface so you don't have anything kind of tinking against there. Tinking is a word. All right. So even though these screws are sticking up a bit, there's enough clearance on the quad cortex to, uh, to make that work in between because the pedal plates actually stick up just like a small amount. Speaking of pedal plates, let's show you how to put those on, I think. That's probably a good next step. So we actually have another quad cortex. I'm gonna open it up. It comes with the power supply that we won't be using in this case. <laughs> okay, so on the bottom is a nice clean surface that we are going to hopefully make even cleaner with a rubbing alcohol swab. It's kind of step one when putting pedal plates on anything. Give a good wipe. Basically just gonna be doing the four corners so I don't need to wipe the whole bottom. But uh, for the quad cortex and any larger pedal, I recommend doing multiple medium pedal plates. Um, in this case, four, one anchor kind of at each corner. So you've given the quad cortex a bit of time to dry. And I've got a few pedal plates here. I like to always first put the, here, let's just plug the DC7 in so I don't have that cable dangling around. So when installing pedal plates, pull the thumb screws off. And I like to put those roughly where you wanna have them on the board. So in this case, I wanna have one around each corner. Got lots of extra thumb screws there. <laughs> okay. 
So let's roughly get the width of this. So I need to go a little wider this way. And then the depth. Uh, we're one row, of run, one row of holes back from the back. I think that'll be good. If we go all the way to the back like this, then it might have adhesive wanting to poke past there. Uh, actually, I kind of like that. Mm, no, let's go back one because this might give us a little more space to use the cable management hole properly. I think what I'm going to do is go a couple of rows of holes from the left side over. We've got enough space there, enough space there. So I'm pretty happy with how that layout's looking. None of these plates are conflicting with the DC7. Um, so let's pull the wax paper backing off. And then you want to make sure to kind of put them all roughly at the same time. You, you can kind of roll it on from one side to the other, but do your best to not really press down until you are confident you're, you're close. <laughs> all right. So kind of using my thumbs as a guide and rows of these holes as a guide for square. I'm trying to line up with the front of the board and the side all at once. This is it. Don't get scared now. You can just gently set that on there for now. I'm going to focus mostly on this front edge. You probably can't see super well, but I'm trying to align the edge of the QC, as the cool kids say, with the edge of the board. So that's pretty good there. The, right now, it's kind of loose on there. If I messed up, I can pull it off and and uh, kind of start again if we need be, but I think we are good. This is looking pretty straight there, straight there. So I would then give it kind of a push in each corner just to make sure those have grabbed. And in theory, if I pull this off, we got that. You can see, here's a good example. I think lots of people are concerned that you've got to have all your pedal plates right in the middle. Um, in this case, it's totally fine that these are there. You know, if you've got like a boss sized pedal, it's okay to have your pedal plate off to the side. It allows for a little bit more micro placement. Um, in this case, I think that turned out all right. But at this stage, I always recommend um, giving a good squish. And we always joke that you got to press the foot switches when you, when you press the pedal plates on, otherwise they're not going to stay which is completely untrue, but also completely true. So let's squish that on. Put that into place. And now, I think at least for now, let's screw that in. Cause that's gonna help us uh, determine where to put our expression pedal. So thumb screws in, when putting thumb screws in, finger tight is plenty, plenty, not plenty, plenty. So you've got a, a uh, slot, I don't know if you can see that on a camera, but you've got a slot in our thumb screws, which is for removing only. Um, I don't recommend taking like a big flat head or a quarter or something and, and tightening those. But if you've got one that is over tightened, and in a tight place, um, if you've got a thick gauge pick, you can use that to loosen that or a coin of some sort. Um, so just tighten it by thumb. Um, in some cases, if you've got a really tight setup, you might have a, a thumb screw like somewhere nestled around in there, in, in which case you could maybe take something to reach just to tighten it if you can't quite you know, get your fingers in there. But all that to say, don't over tighten because you might strip threads um, and bad things could happen. Quad Cortex is in place, at least for now. Let's go grab a, an expression pedal. So 
with these Dunlop, what are they called? The Volume X8. Um, it's a volume and expression pedal. Um, in this case, we're just going to be utilizing the uh, TRS expression input. Um, the bottom is rubber. When it comes to pedal plates, um, you don't want to be sticking our adhesive to rubber. Just most adhesives don't like rubber without being something like super glue and we don't want to go that permanent. So what I recommend in this case is actually removing the screws from the bottom. And we're going to, spoiler alert, flip the bottom and on the other side is a nice clean surface if I recall correctly. Yay, look at that. So what I'm gonna do is just put that back on there and refasten it into place. So these can go in pretty tight, but I don't think you wanna go super, super tight. Similar things can be done with other volume or expression pedals like this. In some cases, what you can actually do is remove the feet and screws with something like the Ernie Ball VP Junior. You can remove those feet and screws, put the um, pedal on the board, and then from the bottom, you can refasten those screws up through the board and back into the pedal. That way uh, you, you bypass using the quick release pedal plates altogether. It's a, you know, a more rigid solution in that case. When it comes to this Dunlop pedal specifically, I found this is, this is the best way to do it. So what I wanna do now, just cause this is like a little, a little greasy, we'll give it a wipe with rubbing alcohol swab. I'll let that dry and then I think I'm going to use two medium pedal plates to mount that on there. Okay, so we're going to do a similar thing that we did with the quad cortex, but this time just with two pedal plates. So somewhere around there. I think, I think in this case we want to kind of sneak this over as much as we can. Um, you can actually uh, overlay the end caps a bit if need be. I think in this case, it'll make the handle a little more awkward, but I would think I'd rather do that than have it over here and risk um, making it too easy to hit these buttons. So we, I think we'll actually sneak that over one more. And then we want to keep this back as much as possible. It's going to be a little tight for getting a cable through there, but I think it's going to work just dandy. Adhesive backing or the wax paper backing off. And let's hope for the best here. Okay, I'm using this row of holes on the back as a guide for square. So if you can see along the top here, using that to make sure she's nice and square. And it wasn't, so I nudged it over a bit. That's looking pretty good to me. I've actually, I've got this over the edge of the board, just a hair. I think, I think it's going to be a, a good choice in this case. Um, it's not going to be enough that it should cause any issues fitting in the road case, things like that. Um, but I think it'll just be more ergonomic. All right. So those are on there. I got a little close to the screw on this one, um, which could cause issues if you, uh, you know, needed to pull this off to get at the innards of it. Um, I don't think it's going to be a big problem, but 
That's probably something I'd avoid in the future. Okay, so let's make sure that still lines up now that I've doinked around with that. Yeah, that's still good. So you can still access it if need be. So let's push those on. There's no foot switch to press on this one, but you can move the treadle. Push that on, push it against the table, push it against your hand. I think that initial compression is really what helps the pedal plates stand the test of time. Okay, so we've got the pedal plates on there. Let's put that into place. Sometimes it can be tricky to align the pegs. What I usually recommend is focusing on aligning two pegs at once. Um, it's easier than trying to get all four to line up. So focus on kind of getting one and then two in. And then, and then the rest, you just give it a and they'll kind of slide into place. So now that I've got in, that in there, let's put some thumb screws in, lock that into place. Finger tight only. Okay, what next? Let's do some cables. Okay, just because it's an easy one to do, I think I'm gonna do the uh, TRS output from the expression pedal first, because that just needs to run from here through this hole here, back up into the expression one input. So I'm gonna grab a TRS cable and a couple other cables and we'll start wiring things up. All right, got a bunch of different cables here. I'm gonna start with the TRS. So let's run out from the expression on that, and I'm actually gonna have to pull. I'm gonna have to pull those thumb screws out of the quad cortex. Should be able to leave the Dunlop expression in place, but for now, let's pull this QC back out, and that way I can run this expression through that hole there, over this way, up and over, and back up through this bad boy. All right, so I got a little extra slack here, but we'll just have that tucked underneath and do expression one there. Next, let's uh, let's do the XLR. I think with these things, um, you can actually change the angle. I might do that after I get to track down this tiny, tiny Allen key. Um, but once you plug those in, you can actually change the angle on that to be a little more that direction. I don't know if you can see on there. You might want to change that to be like a. 45, 30 degree angle that way. But for now, let's just start with this. So if this is our right, I'm gonna run that through first so I can keep track of what's what. Just so right is right on the XLR out. Plug that into the right, I can see it through here. Pull that one through. It in there. Okay, right. how are we looking? Right now, to be honest, it's feeling a little like the cable management needs some TLC, but we'll get there. Okay, as far as MIDI cables go, uh, we get a lot of people asking what MIDI cables will fit through our boards. The first thing I usually say is the cable that you have, try squeezing it through again in a lot of cases, I've been able to get some, some MIDI ends, even with pretty big molded ends on there to fit through our, our boards. But I totally understand that some are too bulky to fit through these pill-shaped holes. Um, I found that these Switchcraft MIDI cables, these right angle ones, are awesome. Um, they will fit through if you 
really give them a good squish on just the right angle, but I, I highly recommend just pulling um, the sheath off. So what this is, is a little strain relief that goes like that. Make sure you got the cables out of the way. And then the other end goes on there. And then there's a screw that holds that in place. So once I've got this cable, oh, this, this uh, O-ring should actually be in there too. But once I've got this through, we'll reassemble this end. Um, but for now, it makes it a lot easier to fit that through the same, the same port that everything else is going through. So we want the MIDI input on there. And I think that's looking pretty good. That angle works all right. And then lift the QC out of the way for a minute so I can squeeze that through. So we got lots of port, lots of cables going through one hole in this case. It's not always the case, but like I said, we're making a lot of stuff fit in a small board, which takes a little extra setup. But at the end of the day, we have a nice, clean um, simplicity from complexity. <laughs> Put this end back on there so I can plug it into the MIDI connector under the board. So we've got that lined up. I'm gonna just tighten that in a bit and make sure that I've got the angle right on the pins because you can turn this within the chassis a bit. Um, so, that's actually kind of upside down at the moment, so let's give it a give it a turn. Actually, stick it in there, and then uh, can rotate it back a bit. It's looking pretty good. Oh, except I can't get at my screw, so hold that where it should be. Tighten her in. This you can tighten pretty good. Okay, good, good, good. This, I don't like how that's conflicting with the DC-7 a bit. Maybe we'll have to nudge that over after. I can see that potentially causing issues, but I don't think it should be a problem since you've got enough clearance here. The feet also hold the board an extra quarter inch off the ground, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Okay, whoa, that's not attached. <laughs> One uh, thing that we might need is something that actually plugs into the input of the quad cortex. So I've got this uh, EBS flat patch cable. That's actually what our um, TRS cable for the expression pedal was as well. I love these cables. They're what we used uh, with our collaboration with Sweetwater for the world's largest pedal board. You should check out that video. Of the 300 some cables we used, not one of them failed. So I think that's a good testament to how awesome they are. Um, I personally recommend them. Check out EBS's stuff. They're great. They've been making pedals since the dawn of time. So check them out. Um, I'm gonna run one of these from here through to the Pliny mod. So I think we're gonna go into input one with that. And then kind of tighten up all this like super freeway of cables over here. And I'm gonna probably have to sort those out a bit more in a minute, but let's see how that's looking under the board. Uh, this cable's got a little extra slack. They, these cables come in, you know, multiple different legs. Might wanna go to a different, to a shorter one there. Yeah, let's grab a shorter one. All right, so I had a PG28, which is 28 centimeters. I'm gonna try a PG18, um, see how that works. That should be 18 centimeters. If you don't know what that is in metric, or uh, imperial, I should say, use Google, because I don't know what it is. <laughs> Okay, let's swap that out for a slightly shorter cable. Let's see how that's gonna work. Might actually be too short. We might have to go with the longer cable, but let's let's tr at least give it a try. Oh yeah, I think th I think that works. 
a little better. Got enough slack to kind of kind of tie that up if we need to later, but not too tight that we've got a lot of strain here. Okay. So, in theory, I think everything except power is plugged in. So we've got guitar in on this side or balance input through there. Um, that goes through to the input one on the quad cortex. We've got XLR left and right out here. We've got MIDI input and we've got the expression from the Dunlop to there. So let's do some power. So I've got some chocks power cables here. And they call them their flex cables because I'm not sure they're flexible in their use cases. They have 10,000 different options. Doesn't matter what you're powering, if it's center pin positive, center pin negative, something old and vintage that only has a battery clip, they've got an option for that. So I've got a couple different lengths laid out here and then I'm actually going to need one of these uh, link cables, which is an EIAJ connector. You can see it's a little different from barrel plugs. It's got a pin in the middle and that's actually for the link input on the crux. So we're gonna take the 24 volt out from the uh, DC7 underneath. That's gonna run through the crux. And then from there, we're gonna run from the crux. This RCA connector goes on there and then this more standard DC barrel plug goes to the, uh, the power input of the, uh, of the quad cortex. So let's flip this around. And I think I'm going to find a place to install the crux somewhere around. Oh, somewhere around there. Oh, uh, step one, crux should be set to 12 volts. The, Quad Cortex is 12 volts. I believe they want two, 2,000 milliamps, two amps. It says three. Let's go with three. Um, so what I'm gonna need is to run a cable from the 24 volt DC out of the DC seven. That then runs into the crux. Maybe we do it like that. Like that, we got a little more slack to kind of deal with later. But then our power cables are a little further from our audio cables, so I think that's the safer bet. So they'll line those up roughly somewhere around there. And let's see if I can still get at those <laughs> screw holes. Just gonna get that side started. Line up the other. This is my first time plugging in a crux, so I'm excited to see how she works. In the past, I've used a current doubler on two channels, current doubler on another two channels, and then those four channels paired down to one channel to power the quad cortex. So this will be a much more streamlined, clean solution. And now I think I might actually need to get a longer cable because in this case, I've got the crux over here and I've got to bridge all that length. So I'll grab a slightly longer, longer one. Boom. Okay. So we go out of the RCA style output there. Plug that in, and then I think maybe we want to go under this IEC cable there, under kind of everything else. Oh, this isn't the right cable. This is actually a phono style jack, and we don't want that. Because last I checked, the quad cortex isn't a vintage pedal. Not yet. Boom, there's the right style cable end 
Okay, run that through. Plug that into there. Got 12 volts set on there. And apparently all our cables are going through this one cable management hole this time around. Normally you'd probably be using much more than one or two, but that's how it panned out this time. Squeeze that through. Hold that while flipping it because it's not fastened in at the moment. Plug that into the back. All right, so let's bring the whole gang in. Bring that back a row. Now that everyone's trying to get in there at once, it's getting a little tight, but I'll make it work. Ah, okay. Fasten the thumbs, thrum. The thumb screws back in place. Chances are I'll have to remove them again. Usually how it goes, put stuff in place, move it a bit. If you plan ahead, you have to do it less. Some people might be more efficient than I. Mm. Now, we need to plug in our LEDs. I got a short little flex cable here. Gonna plug that into the DC barrel portion of the LEDs. Um, with our LEDs, you can set them to 12 volts and you'll get a little more brightness out of it. So how you do that on the DC-7 is refer to this little chart. You've got the dip switches. So just set it to the switch on the left up and the switch on the right down. If you want 15, it's the inverse of 12 and then both up is 18. So, where did this plug go? So if we want to switch, I think those LEDs will put in maybe here because it'll just be a little bit easier to get at if you need to unplug and whatnot. For the most part, the LEDs won't introduce noise into your signal, but uh, we always recommend having them on their own channel. In the case of the DC-7, it's a really clean, isolated power supply. Um, so if you give the RGB LEDs their own channel, you shouldn't have any issues. Um, but we wouldn't recommend putting the LEDs on the same channel as like a digital pedal or like all your fuzzes on one channel. You might start introducing weird, weird noise. So keeping the LEDs on its own channel is really wise. Um, so we've got the LEDs plugged into number seven here. Let's set that left dip switch up and make sure that right one's down. All the other ones we've got set to nine, not like that really matters right now because we're not using any of them. But in most cases, most pedals on the market are nine volts. Um, you know, one of the exceptions being something like the quad cortex. LEDs will work at nine to 12 volts, our LEDs will. Um, 12 will get you a little bit more brightness. Okay. So, in theory, everything should turn on when we plug this in, so let's try it out. Are you ready? <whistles> Something's wrong. It worked. I see the Nero logo. Some sort of boot up sequence. And while it's doing that, let's check out the LEDs. Nice blue. So when you get the RGB remote, it comes with uh, one of these little plastic things just to preserve the battery life. Pull that out of there. And then that'll allow you to switch different colors here. You got different color modes. I, uh, I'm liking kind of the cyan thing here. You can switch uh, to all kinds of crazy, flashy, fancy modes, but in general, I like keeping it on a solid one with the brightness all the way up, of course. 
You may want to get a small pedal plate and um, put that on the back of your remote so you don't lose it. I like to, you know, like fasten it either under the board or somewhere on top. Um, but in this case, I'm going to leave that off to the side for now. So let's flip this over, see what the QC is doing. Looks like it's working. I might have to mess around with some settings on the expression pedal. But it looks like, you know, straight out of the gate, we're pretty much good to go. And uh, heel down, it seems to be turning itself off. It's looking good to me. It's nice and easy. Like that. Bravo, Dunlop. Okay. Pliny's not actually going to be using these quad cortexes. They've got their own presets in their own, but. We have a couple here just to get these set up. So right now this is a brand new one that has nothing on it. But we'll, uh, we'll get that set up enough to just make sure everything's working. Um, make sure that when Ricky goes to set these up for Pliny and Jake that everything's in tip top shape. So right now I'm going to unplug this thing and kind of tidy up all the cables. And then I'm going to actually build the second one. So let's, let's cue a time lapse of that. And when we have both boards going, we'll, uh, we'll take a good look at them. I think that's pretty much it. I'm gonna give this thing a good wipe down. Let's do the other board. One thing worth mentioning while I'm doing this is uh, Aaron Marshall from Intervals. We did a board build for him not too long ago, actually probably about a year ago, and uh, it turned out really good. It was on a Duo 24, so quad cortex build with a expression pedal and a couple other pedals, and his turned out really awesome. So you should check that out on his Instagram. It's on our Instagram as well. Um, but Aaron's actually the one that connected Ricky with us, so. Thanks, uh, Aaron, for the connection there. Um, if you haven't checked out Intervals, he's got some awesome music out there too. Same kind of space as Pliny, instrumental guitar world. If you're into Pliny, you're de you'll definitely be into Intervals. Just gonna clean off the space here. Pro tip that I stole from Ian Allison, I think, who probably stole it from somewhere else, but just get a paintbrush. Right now I'm using to clean the workspace, but usually it's something I use for, if you got a board laying around, you can use that to dust it off. Great tool.
one quick note before I tidy up all the cables here is in most cases what I would do before doing this is ensure everything's working perfectly with a guitar plugged in. Um, that way if you're having any issues or something's plugged in backwards you discover now instead of after you've cleaned up the cables. In this case, literally the only cable going into the quad cortex is this one. So if I do come across issues, it'll be pretty easy to troubleshoot. But I should note that in most cases, I would make sure everything's working great. There's no issues before cleaning up the cabling. One cool detail with these Pliny mods is one actually has Pliny's signature on it and the other actually has Jake's. So in case they get confused which board is which, I'm sure they'll have other ways of figuring that out but one little detail worth noting. I thought it was fun. All right, there we have it. A couple of fantastic boards ready to go out to Pliny and Jake. We're gonna put them in our Temple flight cases and get them on the way to them. Please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions about the gear we used, how I set things up, please comment below. And we will see you in the next video.